Hi everyone, welcome to In the Studio with Kelly Hernig. Today I'm going to share what I've been painting every single day for five to ten minutes a day. That's it, five to ten minutes, and what a difference it has made in my art. Here's what it looks like. Tiny circles. <laughs> Each circle represents a month, so every day I'm painting something, something tiny, but what it creates is a circle of delight. That's what I'm calling it. So I want to share with you what my book looks like. I want to talk about the class that I have this being offered in, and I want to talk about what the practice has done for me and how it keeps me on track about being observant and taking in what is presented to me or what I discover during that day and how I turn it into art. So let's go take a closer look. In January 2023, I set a goal for myself to paint in watercolor every single day, even for five minutes a day. I was willing to take that as a win <laughs> because I believe that when you practice, your art gets a lot better. Every time you sit down and you create is experience for yourself. And I think that experience over time makes you stronger, problem solves better for yourself, and you understand what you like and don't like. So I'm going to share with you this sketchbook. This sketchbook is a handmade sketchbook by Sketchbook Company. They are no longer creating books, but this is 10 inches by 14 inches down. And it is Fabriano cold press, 140 pound inside. So I'm gonna show you my journey here. Inside, I created, since it's the year of the rabbit, I did 2023, and these are little rabbit shakers. Now I found these in January. This was done after January was done. So let me show you January here. Now, I know this looks overwhelming, but here's what I want to say. Each little quadrant, so these circles are divided into eight equal pieces, just like a pie. And then each quadrant has four days inside of it. So you see how tiny, right? These are little slippers I got for Christmas. They're tiny. Look at my thumb next to them. So I figured if I can do little pieces every single day, I'm going to improve I'm going to color mix better. It's going to help me illustrate a little differently than what I was doing because I'm a photorealist. This is kind of letting me get looser. <laughs> so you can see here that it's a very full January. These were flowers from the grocery store, new slippers. I have art supplies and nature in each one and then some personal elements. So these were thrift store finds. I had a book that I bought by Katie Daisy. I was planning my YouTube channel. Um, this was a new palette that I got. Now here is the salt and pepper shaker. This, <laughs> let me show you. See his little face there? That is actually the face of this guy. <laughs> so after I had him, I decided to go ahead and make this page, The Year of the Rabbit. And this is what I bought was the pair of them. And I loved them. They're salt and pepper shakers, but I've never seen them with a little handle before. So I thought they would look really cute turned, one facing you and one turned sideways because it was the handle that I really loved and that's why I bought them. So this practice has continued with me throughout the year. And I'm just going to flip through the pages. Some are bolder. Notice that each month kind of has its own color scheme. <laughs> I, I don't know how that happens, but it does. I guess because of spring and fall and winter, you know, those colors kind of go together. So these were things that we saw an eagle and it was the, um, it was daytime, but we could see the moon. It was just so gorgeous. Look at that. And you see my little pencil there. That's my art supply. What I also like to do in here is not include the full figurine. This is a precious moment guy and I just cut half of it because I thought it was more interesting than showing the whole thing. Again, these were grocery store roses. This was Valentine's Day. This was a little gift that I bought off of an artist and when I received it, it was just so cute I had to put it in here. This was a find that I bought at Michael's. This is a figurine that I love. That was February. And then this is March. 
March I went on vacation. You'll see all the vacation items down here. I know you normally don't see seashells and mermaids in Chicago area in the winter time, but here's a fun thing that I did. I ran into a lady that I used to quilt with and her name is Linda. We saw, we ran into each other at the grocery store and instead of putting in that I saw Linda, I looked up a friendship quilt block for um, what they look like and I just included it here. And I thought that was kind of a nice way to do it. You'll see I have seed pods all over. Daffodils are starting and crocus are starting in the yard. Here is um, a, some more plants. This is where I went on vacation. So I actually took my book with me so that I could do this every day. I found a leaf, a leaf, my suitcase. I was able to see um, two rocket launches from SpaceX, which was very exciting. Um, a little... Uh, find that I bought at the Sugar Boo, the mermaid that I took with me so that I could get f pictures at the beach, some shells, some art supplies that I was trying. My friend Sandy, let me try her art supplies. And then another figurine. And you'll see what I did here to make her look like I was swimming. I put a paint tube and then I added little splashes. Isn't that a cute way to do it? <laughs> and then this is April. April was my birthday, so I turned 58. And I love, there's some sheep here that have black heads. I love those. We saw a barred owl. Our star magnolia was starting to bud out. And these are all flowers from the garden. All these little different flowers in there. This is the robin. We saw our first robin in April and the robin is probably one of my favorite birds. It reminds me that spring is here. You can see that I've got some treasures from the antique store here and here. Um, this was Earth Day so I decided to just add the earth and you just see that it's just my life. So when I look at this you can see this is April. Can you remember what you did in April? <laughs> I know it's hard, right? So this is kind of a diary, but a visual diary. And this is May. You can see May now is getting a little bolder because our flowers here are turning into bright colors. We've got some bleeding hearts, some crab apples, some dogwoods. Um, of course, the leaves are starting to sprout, some periwinkle. Um, I did my quail eggs and feathers class, so that's included in there. And you can see that I always find ways to make paint swatches here. Here's some colors. There's some watercolor half pans. There is some colored pencils in here. There's brushes all over the place and colored pencils and mechanical pencils. This is a pair of scissors. So I am including my art supplies as well. And here's June. Now look at the dramatic color of June. <laughs> For me, it's starting to get hot and I don't really like hot weather. So that's why so much yellow. It's sunny outside, it's hot. So yellow to me is just a hot color. <laughs> but I really liked how this turned out with all the greens, purples, and yellows. It's kind of a nice looking page. It really goes nicely. This is when I got my 24 color palette. This is more color swatching spider wart, a leaf, another leaf, some gooseberries, um, the tartava flower, a little bulb that I bought, a little um, a dried flower. <laughs> These are just charms and game pieces from my collection, my little brush holder, and a K. I love initials, compass. This is when I did my Circle of Delight class, and I will share more about that. And then this is July. <laughs> July was funny. I saw a lot of animals. So we saw deer and monarch and chipmunks and rabbits and all kinds of things. So the deer in the backyard was being bothered by a yellow swallowtail and it actually landed on its nose and just kept going back and forth on it, which was really funny, but it reminded me of the Bambi clip. So I made Bambi there so that I would remember that. Again, a giant paint swatch paint swatch colors here. Some paint tubes down here mixing into one another. I did my class fox and fern here. I worked on some mushrooms. Again, some more color bands. YouTube, uh, my YouTube hit 1,000 viewers and thank you so much for being one of them. I appreciate it so much. And then we've got August. Now notice the color shift here in August. 
it's getting a little more earthy. I can feel it. I can feel it changing. So we're having a little cooler night. It's not too much, but a little cooler. And these were all just things, again, that we saw. Pileated woodpecker. Um, I have figurines that I bought. I bought this little duck and I bought this little rabbit. It's like a Beatrix, Beatrix Potter. And then I bought these little, um, it's a painter, a writer, and a little owl figurines that are only this big. They're so cute. And then this was a precious moment seal. But notice how I made this paint kind of pour down and look into that. I was taking a class with bees, so there's little bees all around. More colors. <laughs> I'm trying to find interesting ways to do the colors so they don't all look the same. And these are Roman Schmall. Um, that's when I did the Roman Schmall videos because they're bigger. They're full pans. They're not half pans. And then this is my September. September was getting very earthy in colors. Can you feel it now, the shift of colors? So here the corn is starting to dry out, so are the soybeans. I'm surrounded by fields. Our temperatures are definitely getting cooler at night, so we're ha able to have the windows open more. And here's a couple figurines. Here was a deer antler. Here's a little snail that I have. There's just some more tardiva. It's our wedding anniversary. This was a piece that I did on YouTube. So you can see everything that I am doing, it is coming up in these little bitty circles. And it's a great way to remind myself what went on. I hope you're seeing that, that I'm remembering so much more than if you would have asked me what happened in April and May. And I would be like, um, I don't know. <laughs> and then I wanted to share with you October so far. So you can see that it's it's half empty, right? So I always start here, and then this is day one through four, and then this is five through eight, and so on, every four days. For this little section here, I'm using the gray Unipin, which is my favorite pen. <laughs> I am taking a new class with photography. It's talking about in and out, so observing something from outside, but also observing it from inside. And then I went to a hunt and gather, and these were what I found. Check these out. They remind me of locker keys. If anyone knows what these are, please let me know. But aren't they cool? They were big, I really liked them, so I just put one right there. And then I went to an antique store the next day, and I found this little Kokeshi doll. Look at how cute he is. I know, I just loved his outfit. Look at his outfit. It's all the way painted. <laughs> so I thought we could do him together, and I have him drawn there. So you can see, there to take five to ten minutes. Each little section, five to ten minutes. Some are even less than five, like this little paint tube here. I've done so many paint tubes, now I can do them in about two minutes. <laughs> so let's pull you closer, and we're going to do this little guy. So you can see I've got all that beautiful texture from that antique pin, and I've got this little guy. And I do try to work from life for the things that I'm finding in the yard. I bring them in, and then I do them, and then I will take them back out in nature usually. Um, if I've seen something like the eagle up here, the eagle was soaring in the sky at a lake that we sit by, so I wanted to include him. And I just look him up on Google, like eagle soaring, because I didn't take my camera and I probably wouldn't have got a good picture anyways. But see how he's there and just fits in the page. So I've got this little guy with me and I'm looking at his skin color first. I'm going to do buff titanium and a little bit of yellow ochre or raw sienna just to turn it a little more yellow so it looks more like this stained wood and a touch of brown iron oxide. There we go. Oops, I've got his clothes turned. <laughs> And sometimes when I don't have time to paint, I do try to sit and at least make a list for myself or else I come in and I draw. Because sometimes 
drawing goes really fast or else I know what I want to include so I just come in here and do that. I'm going to take a little bit of that indanthrone blue that I have and I'm going to dull it down because right now I don't have anything that bold on my on my page and I don't want it to stand out. So I'm adding a little bit of lunar blue to it and I'm going to touch a little bit of the sky blue just like I have on my eagle up there. I really enjoyed this practice. When I started doing this, after about two months, I noticed that my style was getting a little more illustrative instead of detailed. Yes, I still have my details, but I'm not actually sitting there and copying every little detail, and that's what I would have done because I wanted it to look exactly like it. So I felt a big shift when I started doing this, and that was really exciting for me. Look how cute. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? They take five minutes. And I think you're worth five minutes a day, don't you? To sit and just do what you love. I'm going to do a light green. I've got this color called Coastal Fog, which is really pretty and light. And I'm going to touch a little bit of serpentine into it. There we go. I have a little bit more on his neck here that I missed, so I'm going into my color I mixed. There we go. He's got very black, black hair and a little black hat. So I'm going to use the Hematite Violet Genuine for that. That is what I usually use for my black. It's a separating color. That's what I used here on the little pin or lacquer key. I'm trying to make this one darker because it's in front and you can see that on the key here I left it a little lighter so that the black would show up on him. So it does take a little bit of thinking. Isn't that cute? <laughs> okay, let's see what color his eyes are. They're dark. He's got two little red dots for his lips. Do you see those little red dots? Aren't they sweet? He's got gray eyebrows. I'm 
going to add a little bit or a little bit more dark blue in here. So I just want to give him, I love the richness of this little outfit. And that's it. That's my little Kokeshi doll. I will probably come back when it's dry and add little white dots. But isn't he cute? And now I can say that I did this with you on YouTube, which is really nice. So sweet. He just makes me smile. <laughs> And then what I do do is I take this Unipin, Unipin fine line here in the 01 in the light gray, and then I write what everything reminds me of. So when I shared the concertina sketchbook with you, I actually drew one in my book here, and it says concertina sketchbook. And everything that I write with is that Unipin in there. So now that you've seen my practice and what the pages look like and how I can remember everything because I really feel like that's important that I remember what I get done every year and what I'm doing. It's a great way to keep a record. I want to show you the class that I created around this whole concept. It's called Circle of Delight and I take you step by step in this. We talk about design. We talk about adding elements that are personal to you, like your own initial here, or how many people are in your family? Um, do you like letters or numbers? Those kind of things. Everything that is on here is drawn for you. I actually have um, four pages of PDFs. One is nature, one is art supplies, one is just like um, random objects like the bird and the owl here. I even think I have the um, the beehive. So I want you to just think about one little thing at a time, five minutes every day, and changing the colors to fit you. This is a very muted page. I've had so many students share that they are brighter and more robust and they look so beautiful. Think of all of this in a like fuchsia pink or like oranges or reds. I had one lady do it in red, yellows, and oranges. She wanted to work in the colors next to each other in the color wheel and it just came out so beautiful. So I want you to think about that. How would you do yours? What kind of colors would you change? And this class is called Circle of Delight and I will have a link inside the description in case you are wanting to take a peek at what it offers. They are broken down in the classroom. It's broken down as a whole. So we create the giant circle first and then we work on day one day two, day three, day four, day five, <laughs> day six, day seven, day eight. Each day you get to create a little bit of art. That was my intention, that you just take five minutes out of your day to just paint and create, and hopefully it makes you smile. I know it does me. If you were inspired by today's delightful circles, please like, comment, or subscribe. It will help my channel grow, and I would really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.